Okay guys, so what I have today sort of came up unexpectedly and I wanted to do the review now because I have plans for this guy in the future. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this guy. It is the new Transformers Studio Series 31 Battle Damaged Revenge of the Fallen Megatron and he's going to be our focus in the latest Got Bot True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gutbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. And while you're at it, that's right, hit the notification bell. It lets you know when new content, like reviews or Universal Collision, for example, goes up. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, The Autobot Family, and me everywhere across social media. Um, I mentioned Universal Collision there. I just started Season 2. We had the premiere of Episode 1 just the other night as of this recording. If you haven't checked it out yet, check it out. Jump on board with the story. Uh, now, if you have any questions along the way, of course, we'll be talking more about it. And you can certainly ask me questions to keep the story clear for you as we go forward. But the focus today is this guy. Now, I didn't particularly plan to get him because I don't, like it's an excellent mold, I think. I, I like it, I know it's hollow throughout, but there's so much here to like. In fact, I reviewed the original version, and if anything, I think this one's a little bit better. And I say I didn't really have a plan for it because a movie Megatron doesn't particularly fit in my collection. However, I do have another idea for this guy. And when I saw him, I was on kind of two minds. Will I pick him up or won't I? Though he looks extremely cool. And it was one of those situations where Starscream Wife um, kind of picked this guy up for me in recognition of something. Anyway, enough of me babbling on. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And here, yes indeed, we do have Studio Series 31. It is the Battle Damaged Voyager Class Megatron from the, I think, Revenge of the Fallen film. Yeah, Reven Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about availability in the U.S. I have heard it's an exclusive to somewhere. I want to guess Target, but I'm not sure. Up here, if I'm not mistaken, I think it might be an exclusive to Toys R Us. Don't quote me on either of that. I really don't know for sure. That being said, he is um, like a mold reuse, but I think it's a much better reuse of the mold than the original, even though I think the original was absolutely fantastic. Of course, we're going to begin and take a quick look at the packaging right away. And naturally we have packaging and there's battle damage artwork of Megatron on the front and over here on this side, see if I can, there we go, uh, on the back we have the product images like we always do, nice artwork of him on this side, and of course we're back around the front we have both. Um, Hasbro and Takara branding there. Inside, if we open this up, we have our battle scene piece, our, our display piece. This piece! And this is obviously the desert battle scene at the end of Revenge of the Fallen. Um, you know, will he fit in here in his tank boat? It's rough to, I guess you could, uh, I guess you could do that. It's a little rough to fit him there in tank mode, but you can do it. He also comes with these here instructions. I'm pretty sure it's just a repack of what we had with Studio Series 13. Um, I don't even think that the artwork right here has battle damage on his face. But who cares, because these instructions aren't that great anyway. And indeed, here we have Megatron in his tank glory, and this looks beautiful. Now, I just want to point out a couple of quick things here. First, I looked at the original use of this mold, which is a great figure, there's no doubt about it. I looked at this mold back in episode 414, so if you want to see my original thoughts, check that one out. That being said, I think there's a very interesting uh, point to be made here because this is called Battle Damage Megatron and we all know that in the Transformers Siege line we've been getting a whole lot of battle damage done 
by my estimation, not well. It just looks like splotched on mess. Now, some people dig it, and that's cool. And when I have said, hey, it's not for me, hey, I've removed it from Springer uh, or Starscream or whoever, a lot of people said, no, I would have left it because they wouldn't be clean in battle. And there's a point to be made for that. But I have come back with the argument that there is a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. There's a right way to do heavy scratch and a wrong way to do heavy, heavy scratch. This is more akin to the right way. There's a lot of what I assume is dry brushing done on here. It's not like just factory splotched on applied. Like if you look at the Siege Seeker mold, all of them have the exact same battle damage pattern. Exact same. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure that this has the exact same battle damage uh, pattern too, if you look at different versions of Studio Series 31. I, I assume that they do anyway. But, I think that the way that they went about applying it here does look more like a scuffed up battle damage. It does look more like heavy scratch. It's the right way to do it. If Siege done their battle damage the way it's done on this guy, I wouldn't remove it. I would say this is fantastic. This looks realistic and metallic. It looks excellent. The look and the paint on this guy before we even transform him, I'm going to tell you right now, it is an absolute 10. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's fantastic. You will also notice that because we looked at the mold before and showed the conversion going from uh, robot to tank, this is my opportunity to show that transformation going back in the reverse, which is why we're starting out in tank mode, even though usually here on the channel, we start out in the mode that it comes in and we go to the other mode. This time we're, we're doing the reverse because we've already seen the conversion going one way. So if you want to know how do I get this guy from, from robot to tank, like I said, check out episode 414. If you have him in tank somehow and don't remember how to get him back in the robot, well, we're going to run through that pretty quickly here because I think that's the easier way to go for the most part. In this mode, what can I say? He rolls not great, not great, but the other one didn't roll that great. I don't know if he really has to roll that great. Here's the thing. The reason that I don't think that it rolls that great is because we have these shin pieces down here and Maybe they're calf pieces. I'm not sure. Uh, not calf pieces. Uh, uh, thigh pieces. I'm, I'm not sure now, but they're those. Yeah, they're thigh pieces. That's what they are. You just fold them up under. Now, on the original, those two thigh pieces, they tend to fall off if you look at them the wrong way. They're toleranced much better here. These little pieces right here are not toleranced better, unfortunately. Nevertheless, on the original, we have uh, sections that have uh, gray plastic use and some areas have gray paint use and while there's a lot of paint there's ever so slight of a mismatch between the paint and the gray plastic most notably back here on this section of the original we have gray plastic right in the back and then this section coming in right here is gray paint that's just a ever so slight mismatch here I feel like you don't get that it's absolutely seamless probably because it's slathered with so much paint. So how do we get this guy out of this mode and back into robot mode? Not that hard, actually. We're gonna begin by untabbing the legs. And really, all we have, see if I can show this, all we have done is there's a little tab right there, and on the inside of the tread, which I'll try and show in just a second, we have a slot that goes over that little tab and that's what holds it in place. Little bit of a nuisance to get it on, but it's pretty secure once it's there. Just for the record, the little slot that goes over the tab I pointed out is right there. It's that little rectangular slot right down bottom. So now that we've got that done, what comes next? Well, really, you're just going to bring the legs down like that. And I guess sort of stand the lad up. And I just wanted to readjust things slightly so that we could see this easier. We take the leg and we rotate it around and then this piece comes out over. Like I said, this hinge in here is quite tight and on the original, this whole panel I suppose pops off. I have not had it happen on this version of the mold yet. But you bring that out over the front. You slide the treads in. There's a little armature here. You slide the treads in. You angle this up. You 
flip, if I can do it, the kind of panel here to the inside and flip this one to the outside. You angle down that foot, bring this to the outside, and you ooh, split his toes. I'm going to do the same to the other leg just so we can get this guy stood up. And for the benefit of those who do not really understand how the foot works, I'm going to try and show it a little clearer and closer here. We begin by sliding that armature right there out. Then we need to come to this panel here. And this panel will kind of flip in like that. And when it flips in like that, this is so hard to show. When it flips in like that, really there's not a whole lot you can do with it until you start to bring the heel forward. So you're going to aim to bring the heel forward and then bring this up on the kind of inside of the foot. Then on the outside here, there's another piece that comes down. And that's really your foot kind of done. And with the nuisance that is the feet and legs really done and out of the way, we can deal with the upper body. And I have kind of focused in on that because it's like, it's so, he's so tall at the moment that um, it's just easier to do it this way. Now, um, for the arms, this one over here is his cannon arm. There is a little tab that's uh, put up into a slot that's on the arm. We separate that tab from the slot. The tab is, let's see if I can find it here now. The tab is up right there and it goes over a little tab that's in behind. It's up right there. So you take that off and you can swing this arm forward. Right now you can see the orientation that it is. This big like blade piece thing is on the front of the arm. We're gonna leave that for now and just flip the whole shoulder kind of forward on the body. On the other arm, we have a tab on the forearm. And it's a very small tab, but there's a little tab right there on the forearm. And again, we bring this shoulder forward. And that's just, that's fine for now. We just bring it forward and leave it there. Now, the head, we bring that down. We'll see his battle damage face closer. But then we come to the main body here. Now, when you fold this in, there's a big hollow cavity. What you can do is take these blasters and just wedge them out over the little tab that's here. This is what the shoulder tab's onto. And these can kind of go down and fill in part of the body. I showed that when I looked at uh, Studio Series 13. I'm gonna leave them up here. Um, this whole piece flips down, it's his tank turret piece and then this whole piece flips in and comes down kind of behind his body. You're going to bring these arms back, these shoulders back and there's a little slot right there it goes over this little tab right here once you have everything lined up anyway and same on the other side. And in case you couldn't tell, we're almost done. I know I've sort of flown through this relatively quickly, but like I said, I showed it in more detail before. Um, we will rotate this arm. Where's the elbow to? There we go. We'll rotate this arm around so that this big piece here is on the top. We'll rotate that arm around. No problem. We will finally come down here and collapse the hip in and collapse the hip in. And then in the end, boom, here we have Studio Series 31 Battle Damage Revenge of the Fallen Megatron in robot mode. And I love the look of this. It looks mag. Magnificent. I love it. I really do. Um, just to let you know kind of the size, I'm going to do a couple of comparisons, but I will note that by rights, uh, you're supposed to kind of collapse this leg hinge and he should be sat a little bit lower. I kind of dig him up a little bit higher in this case, so that's why I left it, but we'll see how he looks with 
some other Decepticons. First, here he is with many a movie Decepticon, and he does look imposing. Uh, who do I have here? Let's see, we have Stinger, who I looked at in episode 390 there. We have Blackout, who I adore and looked at in episode 402. We have the KSI Sentry, uh, which is like a blue version of Stinger. I really like that. Looked at him in episode 507. We have the Dreads. Um, you know, one time or another I looked at them all. I don't know, Crankcase I looked at in episode 516, for example. That would be the most recent one. We do have Last Night Barricade over here. Who is iffy, in my opinion. Uh, and here he is with the Siege Megatron, who I looked at in episode 495. Of course, this guy has had some custom work done on him. Uh, <laughs> the height difference is amazing. That being said, we have to respect the fact that the Studio Series 1 is a more hollow mold. Nevertheless, like from the front and the back, he really, really does have an imposing stance. From the side, yeah, maybe not lift his arms too much. Or, like I said, you can put those pieces, those little uh, blaster pieces that are up on his shoulders, you can put them down and it does mask it a bit. So we said paint apps were a 10. What about the transformation? The transformation before I said was an 8. I'm still going to say it's basically an 8. Maybe an 8 and a half this time because... We don't have the uh, flaps upon his legs that flop, fall off as much. Granted, the ones on the back of his legs, they're still pretty loose. You might want to thicken those pegs up a little bit. They're not as bad as they were, but they're still pretty loose. The fact that these thigh ones are vastly improved, at least on my copy of the mold, does improve the overall score for the transformation just a little bit. So we had a 10. We have an eight and a half. The guy is scoring tremendous. Um, what about the articulation? The articulation before was an eight and a half. It's the exact same here. We have a head. It can go left and right. It can look way up. It can even look down quite a bit. This head doesn't really tab in back here. Um, I'm going to show the face sculpt up close in a moment too. Uh, the arms, they can go all the way around, out to the side, elbow, bicep swivel. We have, if you want it, uh, this time it's like a bronze color instead of just gray. That huge blade thing, it can fold back up in his arm. This one over here, it can go all the way around, bicep swivel, elbow. Uh, we have like two fingers, three fingers joined here. We have two more joined here so you can move his fingers kind of around. But they're sort of weird anyway. All bronze this time. No waist. But I understand why. We have hips way out to the sides. We can go all the way forward. All the way back. Thigh swivel. Uh, the joints are, like his leg joints are a little bit loose. Like I don't think they should use this mold again. I, I, like I think it's, I think they're done with this mold. Uh, in terms of knees. I guess, you know, because his legs are weird anyway, I guess his knee can go all the way back. Um, but, like, it can also do this, like, chicken leg type of stance. His toes can open and close. The heel can move up and down. No real side-to-side -side movement. Like, no, no real ankle swivel tilt. But there's pieces, like this piece out here can move. This piece in here can wiggle a bit. So you can use that to kind of help his stability for standing and you can use like the ankle joints and you know knee joints to help his stability standing he does stand like an absolute so we have an eight and a half an eight and a half and a ten the overall score for the original was an 8.25 because this one looks better the overall score is a 9.25 it's a fantastic figure. The head sculpt looks like this on this guy. I mean, come on, man. Look at the detail, the molded in detail, the painted in detail. This is Megatron done with this mold at its absolute best. If you're not down for the mold, then you're not going to like this guy. If you are down for the mold, I think that this is the version to get. Some people will say, I don't want the battle damaged head. I'd rather have the regular head. If you were to get that, 
if you were to say, hey, I'm going to use that, you know, that head and this body, I would paint that head. I would at least paint it um, a gunmetal gray by mixing black and silver, but I would definitely add in more silver to give it a better sheen. And that's what I would do with that other head. Simple as that. Nevertheless, I'm, I'm fine with this the way it is. Now, I know what some of you that know me are thinking. Some of you are thinking, hey, Gotbot, but you always say that you only have one representation of a character. Why would you have another Megatron? Because he's not going to particularly fit with your personal collection. Unless you can repurpose him into someone else. Well, full disclosure, Starscream Wife actually got me this guy. And it is, um, I guess, kind of a celebratory gift, so to speak, as I just approach one year of being smoke-free. And um, I guess it was like in recognition of that. And of course, you know, living better, living healthier, never a bad choice. So I appreciate getting this. Not to say I'm going to use it as Megatron. No, but I do have an idea. He is going to be another character and someone that I don't think we've ever gotten an actual toy of. I'll let you think about it. I'm going to go and work on it and see how it works out. And we're going to meet back here some other time to see how the job went. But as a version of Movie Megatron, he's a 9.25, absolutely a win of a mold, a win of a figure, and all around just plain fun. So here we are once again, and I can tell you this, this thing displays, has stature, has status, it stands out, it is fantastic. If every figure could be done and painted to this degree, wow. Wow, this is battle damage done right. Not like the Siege splotches. This is battle damage done right. He is beautiful right from his tread toes to his half smashed head. I don't know. But like everything about this guy, top to bottom, front and back, looks fantastic. Um, I really appreciate... Uh, I guess this guy even more because he is in recognition of me having a year in since quitting smoking. Uh, the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, dirty habit. Don't start. If you start, I implore you. You know, if I can do it, believe me, you can do it. Um, but, I, I, you know, again, like, I, here's, here's something that I got just a, a little recognition for. Uh, the hard work that goes into something like that, um, and I'm really happy to have him. Now, that being said, I've, I've stated a couple of times through this review that this guy is not really going to be Megatron. I do have a different plan for him. Uh, I have an idea of somebody else I want to turn him into, and I said somebody that we have never had before. I'm going to attempt... Attempt. I don't know how successful this is going to be. Um, we're going to, as I said have a visit later to see how successful I was with it. Um, yes or no, yay or nay. But I'm going to attempt to use this mold um, to some degree, though I have seen it used for this character before. I don't want to do kind of exactly what's been done. I'll, I'll do my own take on it. But I'm going to attempt to sort of use this mold for an iteration of Violin Jiger from the Transformers Zone portion of the continuity. Um, you know, where he was the, the leader of the Decepticons. But we'll talk more about that when and if I actually get this to work. Uh, yeah, so once again, let me know what you think about this guy. I know that it's similar to the one before, but I think this one pulls it off just a little bit better. You know I love to hear from you guys. If you haven't checked out Universal Collision yet, please jump on board. It's a fun time. We're going to have fun as the episodes and the story unfolds through the rest of this season um, and beyond. Again, thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time. I know how important it is to you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Please and thank you. Hit the bell if you haven't done so because it lets you know all that new content going up. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams or right here inside the videos.